Time now for your forecast first. WRBL News 3 First Alert Weather. We had a beautiful morning and we are going to have a beautiful afternoon. Here's a live look outside at Auburn University. Looking pretty nice. Lots of sun and a little bit of a breeze out there. 85 degrees right now in Auburn. 86 in Pine Mountain. 83 in Eufaula for the rest of today. We'll continue to see our temperatures warming up. Getting into the 90s this afternoon. 94 degrees as we head towards 4 p.m. with sunny skies. Thank you, Nicole, and straight ahead, evacuees leaving the possible path of Dorian. Take shelter in Columbus, a live report just ahead. Next, from Florida to the Carolinas, preparations for worst-case Dorian scenarios are underway. Plus, a horrifying story out of Alabama where a teen is accused of murdering five family members. News 3 Midday starts now. On your side, this is News 3 Midday. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Greg Lloyd, and today we're tracking Hurricane Dorian from all angles, and we start with the local impact. As Dorian crawls toward Florida's coast in coastal Georgia, evacuees are beginning to take shelter here in Columbus, and that's the big story this midday. Red Cross officials say 195 people are housed at the Civic Center. Almost all of them came to Columbus on six Glen County, Georgia school buses out of Brunswick last night. Officials expect more evacuees from the Georgia coast later today. WRBL News 3's Bria Berry joins us live from the Civic Center with more. Bria? Greg, nearly 200 evacuees are housed here today at the Civic Center, and they will continue to roll in today, later on today. Joining me right now to talk about Hurricane Dorian's evacuation is Adelaide Kirk with the American Red Cross. And how many people are y'all expecting, and what are you guys doing to prepare for them? Well, we don't have an exact number of folks that we're, we're expecting, so we do know that we have some more um, clients that are coming from Glen County, which is right along coastal Georgia where Brunswick is, and that's where most of our residents are from right now and so we do expect a couple of more buses of those folks it's completely open to anyone so we don't have a definitive number that we're expecting but are, pre are prepared to have several hundred if we need to if we need to take care of them and if people want to help how can they donate how can they give the best way to donate is actually to donate cash and so that is to go to redcross.org and donate or you can um, go 1-800 red cross or you can even text the word dorian to 90999 and donate ten dollars um, what we don't need is for folks to come down and donate um, hard goods because we really are good right now. We have all our meals covered. We've got, you know, water. We have, we, we have everything that we need right now. And so folks are so generous and that's awesome, but we don't want to waste anything. So we're just asking folks to hang tight and we'll let people know if, if we need anything else. All right. Thank you so much for talking with us. And guys, we're going to send things back to you in the studio. We're live in Columbus. Bria Berry, WRBL News 3 on your side. Thank you so much, Bria, for that. And right now, News 3 First Alert Meteorologist Nicole Phillips joins us with the latest on Hurricane Dorian's movements. Nicole? Well, Greg, we got an update about an hour ago, and uh, Hurricane Dorian is now a Category 2 hurricane with winds of 110 miles per hour. But here's the deal. Hurricane force winds extend about 60 miles out from the center, and tropical, stor or tropical storm force winds extend about 175 miles out. So this storm is basically growing in size as it continues to move to the northwest at two miles per hour. So we've got a little bit more movement since this morning. So here's a look at what we can expect in current watches and warnings. Uh, we do have a tropical storm warning along the Georgia coast, some hurricane warnings along Charleston, and then we do have a hurricane watch extending now into portions of North Carolina. But this is really kind of the reason why we have the evacuations, because we're worried about the storm surge. Anywhere where we have this storm surge warning, we're seeing storm surge a four to seven feet possible once we get Dorian to kind of move into that location. So here's the track, still a category two hurricane as we go into Wednesday morning winds of 110 miles per hour, and it will continue to stay that way off the coast of Georgia and also off the coast of South Carolina. We don't see this really kind of leaving the area until we head into at least Friday and then Saturday out to sea. Download our weather app and don't forget to turn on the notifications so you can stay up to date on Hurricane Dorian and of course your local forecast. And speaking of that, I will have my full forecast coming up in a few minutes. Greg. 
Okay, thank you so much, Nicole. And as you just heard Nicole mention, Hurricane Dorian has weakened to a Category 2 storm at the moment, but its arrival as a Category 5 in the Bahamas, along with stalling over that island, has proven devastating. At least five people are confirmed dead due to Hurricane Dorian. Residents in Freeport, Grand Bahamas, are facing severely flooded neighborhoods. Also, United Nations officials estimate more than 60,000 people in the Northwest Bahamas will be in need of food. And of course, the full weight of Dorian remains to be seen since the hurricane stalled for so long over the islands. Well, Georgia leaders and emergency management workers have done their best to keep ahead of Dorian. Governor Brian Kemp and Georgia Emergency Management Agency ordered mandatory evacuations of Bryan, Camden, Chatham, Glen, Liberty, and McIntosh counties yesterday. All people living in those counties east of Interstate 95 were impacted by that order and as of this morning, all lanes on Interstate 16 that run from Savannah to Macon started reverse traffic patterns to help with evacuations. All I-16 lanes will allow only westbound traffic from Savannah to US 441 in Dublin. Now this image is one we captured from the Georgia Department of Transportation cameras along Interstate 16. As you can see, there doesn't appear to be that many people leaving right now. But yesterday, Governor Kemp made it clear people need to heed the warnings. And I would like to ask everyone to heed those warnings, especially those that are on our barrier islands. You may be on your own if first responders are unavailable to get to you. And this morning, officials on the eastern coast of Florida wanted residents there to take warning seriously as well. In Melbourne, Florida, officials advised people on the barrier islands and flood prone areas to get out of Dorian's possible path. They reminded residents that emergency services will soon be very limited once Dorian hits the coast. We've done a lot of praying, and so we see the path that it's, you know, projected to take, and I, I just really am very, you know, confident that we're just going to stay safe, but we're always, you know, use wisdom, you know, and, and get into a safe place. If they ask you to leave, leave. Now, the major impact of Dorian to the eastern coast of Florida isn't expected to come along for another 12 to 24 hours. South Carolina's governor ordered mandatory evacuations for coastal areas as well, but so far the response from residents has seemed rather slow. Yesterday, lane reversal started in Hilton Head to help people get away from the coastline. Officials there warned residents not to wait too long in that wait and see mode because a category two storm even could prove catastrophic. And be sure not to miss out on any important, important alerts or breaking news or big stories of the day. Download the WRBL News 3 app and just be sure that you turn on those push alerts. We're keeping our eye on a number of other big stories for you this midday. And first, keeping an eye on Alabama. Five people are dead after a Monday night shooting in Elkmont. Now that's in the northern part of Alabama in Limestone County. The Sheriff's Office told the Huntsville CBS affiliate WHNT a teenager has confessed to the crime. The victims include two adults and three children. Initially, one adult and a child survived but they died at area hospitals overnight. Investigators say the sixth person, a 14-year-old male that made the 911 call, confessed to the murder of his family. A man in Columbus that police arrested in a weekend murder is expected in court tomorrow. 27-year-old Devare Smith is charged with the weekend shooting death of 21-year-old Kadarius Bartlett at Wilson Apartments. Police say they found Bartlett dead inside an apartment there Sunday afternoon. We thank you so much for watching WRBL News 3, your number one source for news at midday. And coming up, important consumer news will tell you more about the tariff war that just seems to grow bigger and bigger between the United States and China. News 3 is on your side with Greg Lloyd and meteorologist Nicole Phillips has your first alert forecast.